right now. So I was just planning on talking through and, uh, and, and making this more of a conversation than a presentation. Oh. Um, I think that the presentation that I sent out gives a sort of high level overview of the various ways that we're using data. So, what, so I'm going to focus this on where we currently are and the ways that we are using data inside of the Open Learning Initiative. Um, highlight a few places that I think we have some opportunities to, uh, to, to be better served by XAPI, but then hopefully throw this open for questions and conversation. I think um, I've been anticipating a little more of, a, of, a, of an interview or conversation than, uh, than a present. So generally speaking, uh, it's usually helpful at this point to call out what it is that the OLI platform does and what our goals are. What is it that makes OLI a little bit different from other approaches? And I think that the key thing that we do in OLI is bring together very integrated and designed learning experiences. Um, and what I mean by this is that frequently in the online learning space, many learning experiences are very segregated. So you head into an LMS and you go to one spot for your group chat. You go to a different spot and you get your list of exercises. And you head somewhere else and you have a list of videos. Um, OLI is intended to provide a place where faculty, learning engineers, learning scientists can sit down and say, all right, here is the learning experience that I want my student to have. I believe that at the very beginning of this process, they're at Knowledge State X. And that this sequence of activities, I want them to read a little bit, and then I want them to see a worked example, and then I'd like them to watch a video, and then I want them to actually solve a problem in which they're getting targeted feedback. Um, and then I want them to take a high stakes assessment. So on the one hand, what we're creating is this experience um, that is reasonably methodical, um, sometimes rather linear, and that the kinds of activities, the kind of learning activities that they're engaged in are somewhat constrained in the sense that we have some semantic context for them. So I'm not simply interested in saying, all right, here's a, here's a block of text. Um, you know, what I really want to understand is what is the learning purpose for each of these objects. And so we wrap that semantic context around to know that we have a, uh, a walkthrough video followed by an example, followed by a worked example, followed by a dialogue. So, um, so when we're designing this OLI experience, one piece of what we are capturing and what we're interested in is not just what is the student doing, but what are the kinds of things that they're interacting with. So this, so this piece is important. Second piece that's important is we recognize that on the one hand, there are a bunch of what we would think of as native activity types, things that are going to be common across all domains, things that are going to be common in most courses. And so we have these sets of inline learning activities that include opportunities for multiple choice and short answer and fill in the blank kinds of things that you'd expect. Um, we have a whole host of somewhat expository types of, uh, of activities and videos and, uh, and, and text and such. Um, we have high stakes assessments, which again contain, you know, with, with what you would expect in terms of multiple choice and auto graded questions. But in addition to this, we have an entire framework for plugging in um, domain specific learning activities, things that can't be handled by these native activity types. And these can range from custom design cognitive tutors to virtual labs in chemistry to um, a, a collaboration style of activity where students are chatting with one another and are then getting a, a chance to interact with an online um, AI uh, agent. So when we start to think about an OLI learning experience, then we have a student that is logging into our system, engaging with various types of activities, and from those activities, we are streaming an awful lot of data. Some of this data is being used immediately um, in, the, in, in the context of being able to provide them feedback, being able to evaluate some of their native activity types, or being able to drive the kinds of actions that they're taking inside of the lab or inside of the, um, you know, inside of the cognitive tutor. Some of this data is getting pushed into our instructor analytics engine. Um, and so that there's a paper on that, that's the uh, skills mapping paper, the sort of short version is that um, the data that is flowing into uh, from student interactions that's flowing into the, uh, the dashboard is 
being used in conjunction with a skills map and a hidden Markov model to make some uh, learning estimates that students engage. Additionally, uh, we have lots and lots of data that isn't being used in the immediate learning context. And so all of this information is getting pushed out to our logging database for later review and analysis, often to drive a research agenda. That set of logging data, we have some set of, um, of interactions that are standard, and these range from you know, what you would really think of as clickstream data, session information. It also includes some of the kinds of interactions that I've described inside of the course. And on top of this, any of these custom activities or custom experiments that have been plugged in are able to log arbitrary data into our logging DB. So on the one hand, we have a set of data flow that's coming in that we use to inform student work and that we use to inform our, uh, our, our faculty. Some of that data is what I think of as data that lives inside of the OLI system. Some of that is data that is owned and controlled by individual activities. So when I talk about being able to plug in a cognitive tutor, for example, um, Right now, the cognitive tutor is maintaining its own student model, which it's updating and keeping track of and using to drive behaviors inside of the tutor. And that's running in parallel with the student model that the OLI learning dashboard is maintaining, right? So we've got system data, we've got internal activity data. At this point, the place where those things can come together is in this generic logging database. When a course is finished, or when a set of courses are finished, because we're normally most interested in a learning experience that is across um, multiple, uh, you know, multiple uses, right? So I want a statistics course that's going to be used in, um, in a number of community colleges and here at CMU. And so I've got a bunch of different uh, sections that have run this course. When that is completed, I then want to be able to take this data and pull it out and export it for a couple of different purposes. Some of those purposes are for iterative course improvement. Um, and we've got a couple of different tools right now that are frankly, you know, somewhat disorganized that I have a set of tools internal to OLI that my team will use and some scripts and spreadsheets that they run. In addition, we have a standard export that dumps out into data shop. Um, but that really is a process of going through and selectively pulling out uh, different components of the data, mapping them onto the uh, tutor messaging format the data shop's using, and, um, and then pushing over to data shop. And Cindy, I think, is on the line and could talk more about what happens at that point. So I guess what I'm describing in this instant is a set of segregated data collection and use that um, you know, in each case ends up using a slightly different protocol and a slightly different um, set of formats. Both, you know, so I'm, I'm using one set of protocols and formats to drive my dashboard. I'm using something else if I'm inside of a cognitive tutor uh, activity. These things get pulled out in a different format to get pushed over to data shop. And so in this broader sense, I have a I have a vague but very strong feeling that there are places where some thoughtful XAPI um, additions could both better facilitate the, the internal interactions and, uh, and, and moving around of this data, but could then also facilitate better access into uh, the, the OLI data stream, whether this would be for something interesting like the cognitive tutor being able to share information about its state uh, and retrieve information from OLI about the about expected state, making that bidirectional. Or one of my other learning activities is a, uh, a tool called the Project Zone. Students are building very large scale cloud computing projects. Um, they that that faculty team has a set of tools they use for, uh, for for cheat detection. Right now, what I need to do is give them a data dump that they then run their cheat detection tools over. You know, we would all be better off if they were able to get into the OLI data stream in a live way, sample what they needed to run their analysis. So, um, so as we're looking ahead to where is OLI now, where ought OLI be going, in the smallest case, um, one of the uh, 
one of the opportunities that we had talked a little bit about um, that, that uh, John was referencing is that we have two kinds of activities inside of OLI um, that, that we might think of as social activities or discourse-based activities. I have um, some targeted discussion activities and we have a, a fairly newly implemented chat activity. Um, the, the data that's being generated from those, I could imagine an XAPI connector that pushes that information into discourse DB that would uh, you know, really build off of some of the work that's already in, in process. But in the larger time frame, you know, over a longer time frame, and as we look at where our system's headed, I can actually just imagine a, a, a much better and more efficient leveraging of XAPI across these different protocols and across these different data streams. Um, sorry, I think I said I was going to give you a short overview, and that turned out not to be so short. But was yeah. that helpful? Is there explanatory power there? Do you have questions? Um, would you like to introduce? about the OLI? Sure, so the Open Learning Initiative is a now 16-year-old research and production project. Um, we got our start in 2001 uh, at a time when there was still a lot of question on how and even whether um, the what was then in the newfangled World Wide Web could be used to deliver learning experiences. And a lot of projects at this time, you think about the, uh, the, the excitement around MIT's open courseware, were, was, were focused on simply taking learning materials and sticking them out there for the world to take a look at. Um, OLI was different sort of fundamentally at conception because what we were most interested in is how can we demonstrably enact learning and how can we provide an environment that simultaneously leverages the best of what we know from, uh, from the learning sciences, but also provides a test bed for running fresh experiments and trying to expand our understanding of how human beings learn. Our initial target for students had been, um, you know, sort of what you think of as the MOOC population now, independent learners, someone out there in the world who just desperately needs to learn statistics on their own. But what we found is that when we began building these integrated learning environments, they were certainly useful for demonstrably enacting learning to, uh, to independent learners, but we started to see faculty pick up these things and begin using them as textbook replacements. And one of the things that they found really valuable was the, uh, you know, this, this ability to get a better look at student learning and understanding where their students were at any given point. And so over the years, our focus has shifted a little bit um, in that while we're still concerned with independent learners, we also have that support of better, uh, better instruction and better teaching as a, as a key part of our mission. So on the one hand, uh, the Open Learning Initiative is a platform with a set of courses that runs on that platform. Um, but at the same time, we think of OLI as a larger community that, uh, that, that includes folks that are leveraging these materials, that includes folks that are developing and running experiments. And all of this is a community that is really focused on, um, on an empirical approach to education, on really leveraging data in ways that, uh, that allow them to treat learning design as a hypothesis and then allow them to prove or disprove those hypotheses. Um, so we just actually ran the numbers uh, on what, our, you know, what, what kind of use we've been seeing on our system. Um, since the current system was, put, uh, was brought online, um, we've seen about four and a half million independent enrollments across OLI courses, and we've seen uh, about uh, 350,000 what we refer to as academic enrollment. So in this case, these are those cases where a live instructor in a classroom is taking advantage of OLI and using it as a textbook replacement. Um, so we see an awful lot of use, and we see that use across a really broad variety of domains. We've got roughly 40 courses uh, that run the gamut from very small service courses that are teaching our uh, local human resources folks how to use Oracle accounting systems to courses in cloud computing, statistics, French, American English and speech, writing. So um, it's, it, it's an exciting project in as much as we have, uh, you know, we, we continue to be able to apply this approach in different domains and areas. Um, the courseware, predominantly is made available under a Creative Commons license. And so um, there continue to be lots of opportunities to modify, revise, and remix, which can be pretty important. 
taxpayer innovation. Um, and we are in the process of pushing the code base out and making it open as well. So we're going to be releasing that under um, an MIT license. One of the exciting things that we have at OLI is our relationship with the larger Carnegie Mellon community, specifically the Simon Initiative, uh, where our learning science and educational technology work um, sort of comes together. In that space, um, we sometimes have been really successful in sharing things. And so we have a logging library that was originally developed for our cognitive tutor authoring work that's now shared with OLI, uh, that's been made available open source, and that could end up being a really nice central place where if we're thinking about um, you know, what's a place that XAPI can better plug into uh, the larger CMU space and specifically into OLI, um, that might be one interesting starting point. Mm -hmm. So um, can I say that OLI is like a, an integrated framework for, uh, for content? And, and this framework can be open to um, outside community. They can use this framework to um, build a course in an integrated environment. That's, that's correct. Um, and I think that beyond just the course creation, so, so we've been investing pretty heavily in better tools for opening up that course creation process. So we've got a great set of authoring tools in place right now. But one of the next steps is actually to start to integrate into that authoring view um, an iterative improvement view so that, um, you know, so that we're leveraging this data, not just to show you what current students are doing, but also where is this course design succeeding and where do you need to spend some time improving it? Uh, because um, all the data model, because you have done this daily analytics for decades, and all the data models are built before the API and was invented. Um, so what do you mm -hmm. think about um, this SAPI profile build up they can uh, work with your data model? So I think this is a place where, and this is one of the reasons that I asked Martin to join the conversation. Um, I think. Hello? Let's see what happened. Hello? Hi, it's Martin. I think Norman finally, finally caught up with the fact that he's on a phone, literally walking around campus trying to do this. <laughs> I'm surprised it lasted this long, to be honest. <laughs> At this critical moment. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I can jump in for a couple of minutes because I have to go soon, unfortunately, but I can always answer questions later on. So I'm a senior, senior software engineer at OLI and the Cyber Initiative. Okay. Thank um, you. Um, I think I could sort of cast a lot of what Norman's been talking about in terms of XAPI. Mm -hmm. So imagine that the OLI framework has its own envelope. Think of the, the XAPI envelope, but we can, I think, support the XAPI activity types. And one of the activity types that we are thinking about is, for example, uh, this, the data shop format that supports tutoring. So we were, we were very interested in thinking about, can we open up our logging data management framework to support at least XAPI activity types? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but um, as Norman said, we have our own internal logging for things like page clicks and quizzes, but we, we can in, in incorporate in a very flexible way, external logging as well. And we were thinking of maybe we can make that into an XAPI endpoint so that you can send XAPI to OLI and get XAPI out of it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I kind of want to talk to Norman a little bit more about what, what what's involved and how he, how he sees that, but I think that's where we're going with it. We've had some pretty good success in having external developers integrate complete applications, including logging into our system. And now we're thinking of, can we make the glue between external applications and OLI, can we make that X API, for example? What would, what would it take? I think we would get a lot more rich content, but I think it's interesting from our perspective, we have a lot of experience in looking at activity types from a semantic perspective. So anytime that we incorporate new logging data, we have to ask ourselves, how can we analyze the data uh, that, that's, that it spits out, that we extract from it, either through machine learning or statistics. So we sort of approach everything from a, a different perspective. 
every time we add new logging, we, we start the question is, okay, imagine that someone uses this application. How would you analyze the results? And then we work backwards as to what needs to be logged. Yeah, uh, I like what you said about think back from the semantic analytics. Mm -hmm. So that could be a, um, like a, a model for our SAP profile, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If I can jump in here for a minute. So I, I think one project that we're doing here at the University of Hawaii is a much smaller scale, but kind of like what you guys are trying to do with OLI. So we have a, a question that we're trying to explore, which is how learning patterns for students, in a particular high enrollment course change over time, mm -hmm. how do they interact with the content in the course and assessment performance throughout the life, the longevity of the course. To do that, we are hosting this course in WordPress and using a bunch of other supporting technologies like H5P. Mm -hmm. So we expanded H5P to send XAPI statements that were compliant with the video profile, to send assessment data. Uh, we have Pressbooks sending XAPI data now, and we have WordPress for just the login and all that kind of stuff, sending more traditional log data as XAPI statements as well. So mm -hmm. all of those tools will send to a single learning record store, which we can then pull and, and, and use our analysis for. But, the, but I think part of the benefit of that uh, in addition to just sort of having a single data store that has a common ontology and structure is that a lot of the data um, is designed around profile. So it can be used in other, basically in any other tool that, that, that is compliant with those profiles. So there are, we have, we've built visualizations that are compliant with any video data that, that follows the video profile for XAPI, um, mm -hmm. for example. Um, so we can e easily reuse components across courses as well as uh, leave it open for expansion for other, other needs. So when you say video, this maps to the video activity type in the XAPI registry, for example? It maps, yes, to the video profile, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of what you guys are going for. It sounds like you want to keep your, your logged data as it's currently done in OLI the same. Uh, but any new or, or maybe you would expand some of OLI to send XAPI statements and you'd have sort of both of these stores living together. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah. What the actual architecture do, looks like, we're not quite sure. We've, we're, we're talking about a lot of different ways of doing this. We have very large data requirements. So we're thinking of yeah. taking our log data, data facility and turning it into something like Kafka just to be able to handle all the, the, the volume and the, the sure. processing. Because we're going to also have a lot of real-time processing, or at least trying to keep up processing uh, on the back end as data comes in, because we're also getting a lot more uh, we, we just integrated an activity <coughs> that we add to content pages that does sort of a poor men's head tracking. And that we'd like to also have an XAPI format so that other people can use the same kind of plugin to do these kinds of analysis. So we're looking at what is the best way to refactor our system so that we can take in XAPI, but also produce XAPI. And I, I think producing may be more interesting because we can already put filters on our output uh, putting it in would be, at this point, would be a question of allowing XAPI to be stored in our LRS. Right, right. Which I think is sort of low hanging fruit for us right now. Yeah, I mean, um, so just food for thought here. So what I mentioned to Norman, and he briefly covered this topic, was we, we had talked about trying to extend your discourse tools to send mm -hmm. XAPI statements. So, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't sound like that's a priority. And another thing that's an option here is maybe Edward can jump in on this, is as we do the at-risk profile, that might be more consistent with some of the data you're already collecting. So if you, if you wanted to take some of your existing log data and transform it into XAPI for, to learn right. for practical right. purposes and use it for a modeling, an at-risk modeling, then that might be something that we could, might be interesting. Uh, we could do. Unfortunately, yeah. I was just sort of thrown into this meeting at last minute. I have to go to another meeting. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, is there, this I'll is John Costa. Real quick question: Is there a place on the OLI website that talks about the media types that are um, included or supported in this? Uh, we've got a structure where we've XAPI enabled uh, textbook, but with all rich media sequenced into it and assessments, etc. That could fit quite nicely into this. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Let me talk to Norma to see sort of what we can give out. Uh, it's not that it's that it's uh, proprietary. I just want to make sure sort of how we structure this. Okay. Yeah. And I want to I want to circle back with him anyway to sort of next steps for us, uh, because we may also be able to uh, give you folks access to our API that allows you to add activities to OLI, in which case we can then use that as a jump point to see, okay, what kind of data can we then have go between all the systems? And that's something we've done a couple of times now. So um, I, I saw um, Andy Johnson uh, asked, what are the barriers to adopting SAP as your solution? Um, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I would say it's, it's pure software. It's, it's an old legacy system that existed way long before XAPI, and it's literally just a question of all the hooks are there. It just we need we need a, a rewrite. I think that's really what it comes down to. But we have we we now started to put resources behind this, so it's a very exciting time for us. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I would recommend that we try to arrange a meeting that's kind yeah. of focused on OLI, yeah. so that we can just talk through all that. Yep. No problem. All right. I really got to go now. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming. Yep. See you guys. Okay. Thank you. So Jonathan, that is my feedback. That would be very interesting to get, to get that meeting going. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think that makes sense for what they're, what they're trying to emphasize at this point. So yeah, we'll try to arrange that meeting and see if we can do the modeling for it. It'd be cool. What's interesting, a, a lot of this is focused on activity. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how much of the data is actually more related to effort, which would be more, uh, well, I don't know, more useful, but, but certainly another usefulness, if that's a way of saying that, uh, in predictive modeling, because uh, activity and effort are not always the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully we could explore that uh, in a meeting to get a better sense of aside from just sort of generic log data, what, what exactly they're collecting at this point.